Right now, you're listening to the Azeem Digital Asks podcast, the podcast where I, Azeem, talk to some of the top marketers in the industry, find out everything about them, how they got to where they are today, and more importantly, sharing some really useful marketing tips that will help everybody listening to this become better marketers. Stay tuned for another great episode. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Azeem Digital Asks podcast. Very excited for this episode today. We're going to be talking all about going freelance and also setting up and running events. And what a guest I have for you today. She is the absolutely awesome Juliana Turnbull, better known as SEO Joe Blogs. She is freelance marketing consultant, speaker, organizer of Search London, founder of Turn Digi, a finalist in the Global Freelancer 2020 Awards, digital women's finalist, generally an all-round incredibly awesome individual who I'm definitely looking forward to bumping into at a conference soon. Welcome to the show. Wow, well, thank you very much. What an intro indeed. Thank you. Very surprised. You, uh, well, it, was, it was very natural and you said so many great things. Thank you for having me on the show today. It's easy when you are as awesome as you are, my friend. How are we? How is life abroad? Yes, all is good. Uh, we are. We have quite loose-ish restrictions here in Barcelona. Uh, I've been living here off and on for about five and a half, six years. And yeah, hopefully it'll be soon somewhere and we can maybe uh, see family and friends soon. Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Right. Before we get into the meat and bones of the episode, I always ask everybody an icebreaker question. And for yourself, what I want to know from you is that everybody has a song that is a guilty pleasure. What would you say yours is? My song, I would say, has to be one from the movie Amélie Poudin, which came out in early 2000. The soundtrack, it is one of the songs of the soundtrack, the Comptine d'un autre été. Uh, because I'm trying to actually play on the guitar. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite uh, movies, and uh, it's my sister and my uh, big number birthday coming up. And as I can't see her, I thought I'd try and play some of the song for her as a surprise, of course. She doesn't listen to your podcast yet, though. <laughs> I was just going to say <laughs> two things. Number one, hope she's not listening which is weird for a podcaster to say. And number two, I'm definitely not going to try and repeat that because I will absolutely butcher the language and probably lose some listeners from France. But yes, welcome to the show. Very excited to talk to you. For those who sadly, and it's definitely their loss, don't know who you are, do you mind giving a little bit of a quicker, better introduction to yourself? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, yeah, my full name is Joe Juliana Turnbull, uh, also known as SEO Joe Blogs in the industry. I'm in Barcelona, as I mentioned, about five and a half, six years, and I go more by uh, Juliana here. I speak uh, fluent Spanish, English, and some, uh, obviously, <laughs> fluent Spanish, English, and of course, um, did I just say fluent Spanish, English? And I think that's it, actually. I spoke some Japanese, but I don't think I'll put that down because I've I've a lot uh, forgotten quite a bit and um, yeah I do improv so uh, I do that in my free time and uh, luckily we're able to do that again now since two weeks. Awesome a woman of many talents very glad to have you on um, and I'm looking forward to learning more from you especially about a couple of things that uh, seem to be quite popular and talked about in the industry at the moment well they're always talked about but I think they're talked about more often now especially with everything that's happened with this pandemic so I wanted to start by talking about going freelance and for yourself I'd love to know what inspired you to go freelance what inspired me to go freelance I think it's because when we were younger we moved around a lot Uh, as a child I think I've now moved house 25 times in countries nine so I as a as a child you think that as an adult you can or as a grown you can do whatever you want And I didn't like the fact that we had to move because of a job. So I told myself I would always have my own business and I would always be able to work from whichever country I wanted to work from. That is awesome. Did you say nine countries? Nine countries now. I mean, I don't know if I can technically include France because I did a year Erasmus there and I wasn't a tax resident. But and I know the tax is quite difficult admin thing to navigate. But yes, nine that is insane. So I'd love to, to dig in more in, into that topic. I'd love to know 
what came as a surprise to you when you made the switch to freelance? Well, for me, I think it's more about um, the fact that everyone was really enthusiastic about working with me. Um, I got loads of emails saying, yes, let's do this together. That'd be great. And um, then when you said, okay, these are my rates and this, I'll sign a contract, you, it was a little bit of um, ooh, tumbleweed, you know, it's very quiet. And what I realized with, with some nationalities, a lot of them do not like confrontation. So people would rather say nothing than to actually say no. And I was quite surprised by that. That leads me very nicely to my next question then. So when you have periods like that, when it's when it's quieter, how did you cope and how did you get through those? In terms of when it's quiet, I think it's all about being a bit patient. So I've tried to remind myself of that and just to also enjoy that time off. For me, I haven't had loads of uh, time off when I have and when I plan to have a bit of a downtime. It's really about making the most of what you can and cannot do. Obviously, in the pandemic is different, but it would be, you know, going to visit family. If you're not allowed to travel, then I like to do more um, activities like, for example, the running. There's a lot of things on Strava that you can do, like the running challenge and the walking challenge. And then more recently, I've been learning to play the guitar. Awesome. If you've listened to the podcast in the past, you know that I often like to put guests on the spot and ask them questions that I haven't prepared them all. So here's one for you right now. When you moved from from employed to freelance, what is one thing that came up that you were like, wow, this is a surprise, did not know that this is a thing? I think there was a big one around uh, money. Like, I didn't realize how many rich companies would pull the card like, oh, we don't have any money, Mm. so we can't pay you. (laughs) What advice would you give then to people who are struggling to get their invoices paid right now? Because that's often talked about as well. Yeah, so in this particular case, I knew that they did have money because my sister actually worked there and I knew that they had (laughs) done this before to other people when I was speaking to her. But um, in terms of, um, you know, making sure that your invoices do get paid, they do get paid for me because we discussed that really up front. Okay, these are my rates and this is, uh, and I, you know, my billing payment is whatever, 30 days, 15 days. Um, And then people say yes, no. And if you're, you know, arguing around paying and pay periods before you've actually signed a contract, That's just an assign for you to, okay, maybe I shouldn't work with these people or maybe we're not a good fit. So it's also good to feel strong enough to walk away from things. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's brilliant advice. And then the last question that I'll ask you about going freelance for now is that if there are people listening to this who are currently considering making that move going freelance, what advice would you give them? The advice I would say is to work on your USP, your unique selling proposition. What is it that you offer that you feel passionate about and that you can feel confident delivering? Of course, you can do other pieces, um, give other advice. You can work on other projects too, but focus on one that you sell yourself around and then build up the others. That's absolutely brilliant. So let's change topics slightly and let's talk about events because you have quite a lot of activity in the event space and I know you've got a few coming up soon which absolutely shout from the rooftops about them. I wanted to start from the beginning though and just ask you how difficult is it to set up and run an event? At the beginning yes it was quite difficult to set up and run because there is a cost involved and you need to have the commitment from people that they will uh, attend. Uh, I run Search London, I I started that um, in January 2011. Actually, it was a Judith Lewis. It was her group. And when I set it up, I had a big speaker, well, a big company help with it. So Google, they, they spoke at it. And that helped to draw the attention and to raise the profile. And after that, it became easier. And then when I was in Australia, I had a, some friends helping me. And when I came back to Europe, um, Tim stayed and he's been running it with me. So in terms of us you know, making sure that people attend. I think that can be sometimes a challenge because we can have weather. We had one event where we just had 10 people attend. It was a very cold March a couple of years ago, I believe. And people just ended up staying home because it was like, I think it was the east, the beast from the east. 
So we've had consistently lots of events coming and people attending, but then that one, you know, it was 10 of us because I think a lot of people just wanted to stay at home. So the challenge is really trying to get that commitment from people. Yeah, absolutely. I think my own personal opinion is that it would be completely different now because just recently we had a bank holiday over here in the UK and it was absolutely hammering it down with rain. And right now you're only allowed to sit outside at pubs and have a beer. So I drove past pubs where there were people queuing in the rain to sit outside in the rain just to have a beer. So I think definitely that would change now. But anyway, less about me, more about yourself. When you're setting up and running events, what is the biggest challenge that you have? I think it is still the commitment. Um, when we started charging for the events, when it was in the pub, uh, we had less of a dropout. So if we had, let's say, 80 people RSVP and pay the, the 10 pounds to go to the event, we had 70 people attend. Whereas before, when we did 120 on Meetup and it was free, we had 60 people attend. And the pubs in London aren't the biggest, and the number of pubs that can host more than 60 people halves uh, drops by 50%, but the price doubles. So we still have to pay a deposit for it. In terms of the online events now, I think we still find that it is difficult to get people's commitment because it is free and people are also very time pressed. I think that people are working longer. Um, They probably are, instead of doing the commute, maybe they're just putting an extra hour or so And I think besides that, now people maybe are really just, they just can't do another online event. They can't do any more computer time. So that's a new challenge for, um, I suppose, the um, online, well, the online world that we're all really living in. Yeah, absolutely. And you've led me on to a couple of questions, again, that I haven't prepared you for very nicely. So what would you say are the biggest challenges in trying to make an in-person event an online event? I would say it depends really on how your event is. So I'd say for our one for Search London, the biggest challenge was because was the lack of social interaction. Because in Search London, yes, we do have some good speakers and a lot of people that speak at Search London are first time speakers. But people come there because they want to chat to others, uh, unwind after work, maybe have a drink, uh, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, coffee, whatever, and have a bite to eat. So it's the challenge was trying to get that online. And we we have done it through uh, hosting a platform, uh, hosting on a platform called Remo. And we've had 30 people at our, or 40 pre- people at our birthday party in February. But I think that's still something that you, it's very difficult to get online. Yeah, definitely. And what I'd love to ask you, especially someone who's been in 9 million countries, <laughs> How do you find setting the time for events, especially when, you know, online events can be accessed by anybody globally? How do you find picking the right time for that event to go out? Well, for Search London, we always did it right after work. So we've kept it around that time. So 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. GMT or BST now. In terms of turn to G, yes, I did do the event and it was like over the day at the beginning and we had loads of views actually we had maybe over 4,000 in the first year so I guess well it was in the first eight months really but then as we got more events that were doing online then I found that there was less people that could stay the whole day I mean I still had it blocked out in sections and now what I'm doing is I'm just doing it in the evening and I'll do one for Australia time zone and I'll do that uh, May 27th. So I'll be from 5 p.m. Sydney time, which means that those people in, um, you know, uh, Hong Kong, Japan, Indonesia can log in because I still found that there were a lot of online events, but it didn't always cover um, those markets. Absolutely. And then last couple from me, you, you touched on it yourself there. There are so many virtual events now. How do you make sure that you'll stand out from the rest? That's a very good question. In terms of how do I make it stand out from the rest? I think with Search London, we're lucky. Like we've had 10 years of it. And um, I would like us to go back to the pub or a physical event in some way or form. Uh, it stands out, I think, because of, you know, we one of the longest or maybe the longest uh, London uh, networking group. 
and also the fact that um, there's a lot of active members that come. Uh, I do like to promote first-time speakers. Uh, a lot of people that have spoken at Search London then went on to Brighton SEO. Uh, in terms of Duran Gigi, I did that separately uh, because I saw that there was not a lot of events that were helping to promote entrepreneurs. So that's it is for people that are entrepreneurial in themselves, like maybe they are looking to set up their own business or they have their own business. It's also supporting those that are first time speakers or those that maybe haven't spoken much. So I, that's why I say rising talent. So rising visible talent because everyone is talented anyway. It's just maybe they're not as visible as others. And also I always like to have a diverse range of speakers. So in London, yes, we did have people that are in the London area um, or some people that used to come to London for work and maybe they were flying in from Germany or, or France or whatever. but with Turn Gigi and because of we, we I have moved around a lot and used to international environment, I wanted to have more of an international feel. So we have had people dialing in, I think from so far nine countries. And I am looking hopefully to, you know, have people dialing in from more in the near future. It's just sometimes difficult to get hold of people if you don't know them personally. Yeah, definitely. It's sometimes a problem that I have had with trying to get some people to come on this podcast uh but yeah look this has been a really insightful episode if i could ask you if you could narrow it down into say three things that you wanted people to take away from this episode with you what would they be so three things that i think everyone should take away or should think about is um number one no regrets so plan what you want to do and do it number two ties in with that but make the most of every opportunity and three, don't listen to others. Make your dream your reality. Um, and the reason why I say this is because, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to leave a certain country um, if, you know, visa requirements and so on. Or maybe it's you're coming from an expensive country, moving to a, uh, a less expensive and people might say, why, why are you you're giving up opportunities? No, it's your happiness, really. And actually, my sister gave me this book uh, so no one can see it, but I tweeted it on Twitter uh, in uh, beginning of May, uh, May 3rd, May 2nd. And it says happiness is, and it's 500 things to be happy about. And if you read that, they're very simple, like things that make you happy. So really you need to be very content and happy with your choices. So no regrets, make the most of every opportunity and don't listen to others. Make your dream your reality. Love that. Absolutely love that. Words to live by. If people wanted to learn more about you, connect with you on social media, follow you, how can they do that? Well, they can follow me at SEO Joe Blogs on Twitter or at uh, Turn Digi, the the event that I'm running um, May 27th. And also they can find me at, at Search London, Search LDN. And we have our event uh, May 24th, sorry, May 25th at 5 p.m. BST. The Sydney one will be on May 27th at 5 p.m. Australia time which is 8 a.m bst love that I love that you put it into gmt or bst as well because I'm absolutely useless with time zones but from me to you thank you for being an absolutely awesome guest really enjoyed this episode with you very glad we got to do it definitely looking forward to bumping into you at a conference hopefully soon fingers crossed but this is the part of the episode where I shut up and let my guest have the last word on the episode so within reason the virtual floor is all yours. Well, thank you very much, Azim. I just wanted to say I've really enjoyed your podcast and I really like what you're doing in the community. Uh, you've been on a couple of shows that I've hosted and I just uh, I think it's great what you're doing. And I just hope that more people recognize it and we have um, more of these types of events in future, especially when we go back to face to face. So that was another great episode in the bag. I'm really enjoying hearing from some brilliant people in this industry. If you enjoyed this podcast, please follow me on Spotify. Please leave a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever platform you are using. Tell a friend to tell a friend and hopefully see you for the next episode.